Let's talk about value for money. The LG 27GP850. Now, this is a 1440p, 165Hz nano IPS panel. This one right here in front of me. You might remember about a year ago, nano IPS and particularly the 27GP850, GN850, and before that, the GL850. These were flagship 1440p monitors. And this one started a year ago at just over £500 or $600. So now at 300 pounds, this is a bang for your buck value proposition. So in this video, I'm going to talk through what's good and what's bad about this monitor and help you decide on whether you want to spend your hard earned cash on this particular monitor. And if you're not convinced, then I have some very good alternatives to propose, which we can go through. Let's talk about what's good about it. Let's focus firstly on the speed on this gaming monitor. Nano IPS is known to be very good when it comes to response times and not just fake response times that a lot of uh, gaming monitor brands come up with. Response times that are actually quite close to the market advertised number, but also when used, don't give you any adverse effects like ghosting, inverse ghosting. You'd be pleased to know that this monitor is no different. The only caveat to that is that you should not ever go into the fastest mode uh, setting. So it comes with a number of response time settings. You have off, normal, fast and faster. I would recommend sticking with fast. Now, if you want more detail on what happens when you go to faster, I highly recommend going and watching hardware and box review on this particular monitor. And they explain how faster actually starts taking you into inverse ghosting. So it's not worth going towards that. Fast is actually giving you 4.5 um, ms response time in most cases with no overshoot, no ghosting, no, no issues at all. So, so this is the recommended place to be. The other main thing in terms of speed that we as gamers look at is the refresh rate. Now, this monitor, as far as I'm concerned, is mid-tier and it's going to cover most gaming needs with 165 hertz. However, you do have the option of overclocking the monitor to 180 hertz. Um, but do bear in mind that when you go into overclocked mode to 180 hertz, you can no longer use adaptive sync. So I've just turned over clock off. And once this settles, my adaptive sync will be turned back on. So that's just something to bear in mind. To be honest, 15 hertz is not going to make a big difference. I feel like it's more of a gimmick rather than actually a feature because you can't actually use some of the monitor's features now. But that's, uh, that's, that's subjective. Then the only other thing in terms of uh, speed is input lag. Again, highly recommend looking at uh, hardware and box review on this monitor. Um, this m monitor and generally any LG Nano IPS Ultra Gear monitors have excellent input lag. I mean, there is literally none and it's not noticeable. It's very low, very good from that point of view. Next good point is the design. I've covered this in my previous video, which uh, the link is in the description. This is a very thin, minimalistic design. It doesn't get any better than this in terms of um, thin, minimalistic design. Even the, um, the mount that this comes with, it's a very nice design. The other thing that I really appreciate about this is the placement and the design of uh, the, the input panel. It's easy to access and it's quite uh, neatly designed. A lot of monitors seem to put them all over the place and you're always looking for where those HDMIs and those DP1.4s are going to plug in. Not on this. It's a nice little circle right over here. It's very easy to access. The next positive point is the color performance. LG Nano IPS is known for color performance. So if you're somebody that along with gaming wants to do some productivity, you know, some professional editing, this is a very good monitor to consider. It has 98% DCI coverage, and that's been measured to be around 96% in real life. Again, that's figure from hardware and box. Highly recommend going and looking at that. So in terms of color performance, uh, Nano IPS is known for these, and the LG 27GP850 is no different in that regard. Final point, brightness. This is something quite interesting because a lot of people um, overlook how important it is to have both sides of the spectrum in terms of brightness. You can go very low on this monitor, which means that in a very dark lit room, um, it's quite good to have as an option 
to go that low and be able to, to view the, the screen in very low light environments. On the other side, you can go up to 400 nits, which um, in this class of panel is actually quite good. But it's a very nice, bright panel, even for use in direct sunlight. Now, let's cover the bad points. And this is probably a game changer or job stopper for a lot of people. The contrast ratio on this monitor is not good at all. It's hard to show and exemplify the problem with the contrast ratio versus the Odyssey G7. It looks washed out. The colors on the G7 pop because the contrast ratio on that monitor is excellent. This is a known problem for, for nano IPS panels um, and IPS panels in general. The contrast ratio has never been good. It's been somewhat improved on the 27 GP850, which is this one, versus the previous models, the GN850 and the GL850, but certainly not enough to, to actually make a big difference. This is a big, a big problem. And the second point, and this is a minor concern, is the build quality. I don't know if everybody's gonna have this, but listen to this. The trim on the top of this monitor, I just have to apply some force, and it seems to buckle in. I don't expect such low quality from LG Ultra Gear. When I buy something from LG, especially one of their Ultra Gear uh, branded monitors, I expect absolute perfection, you know? This is not good. That's terrible, actually. So I have a mind to, to actually have this uh, replaced with the warranty, um, or at least repaired. But this is not good. I hope you have better luck with, your, with yours. Uh, those are the two main points. There is one more thing, and that is to do with motion blur reduction. Now, motion blur reduction, normally this works. I mean, it's to do with backlight strobing, and it helps with uh, fast-moving objects and reducing... Uh, visual blur, making those moving, fast moving objects more clear. Some monitors like uh, MSI with their with their uh, MAG 274 QRF-QD have implemented MBR very good. With this particular monitor, I feel like the motion blur reduction isn't that good. Firstly, you've got to turn off adaptive sync. It does not work with it. There you go. Then you can turn it on. But it doesn't matter because the, the motion blur reduction feature on this, when you view this with UFO test, you cannot actually notice a, a very good increase in the clarity of the moving object. And to add uh, or complicate matters, it actually shows a bit of a red fringe. And this is called red fringing. It's a known issue. So motion blur reduction uh, as a feature on this monitor is not good. If you're buying the LG 27 GP850 with in mind the fact that it's got motion blur reduction, I would not recommend it. It's not actually a good feature. There is a cheaper version of this monitor uh, called the uh, 27 GL or GP83 uh, version of monitors. And basically they are the same panel without motion blur reduction. So if you can find those monitors cheaper, those are the ones I would recommend instead of these. All in all, still at 300 pounds without motion blur reduction being used and ignoring the contrast ratio and this build quality issue, which I think might only be uh, um, you know, an outlier, outlier case. This is a brilliant panel at 300 pounds. Great value for money, high speed, good colors, very good performance for gaming, very good overall value for money, but okay you might not like the fact that the contrast ratio is not great, so therefore you might want different, uh, different proposals. In terms of alternatives, I have one other IPS panel that I would highly recommend. Before I go into that one, for sure, if you can find any of the other LG Nano IPSs in the same brand of 1440p, um, 165Hz, 27GP850, 27GL83, uh, 27GP83, 27 GN 850. If you can find any of these monitors for less than 300 pounds or 300 dollars, they all have very similar performance. So those are good alternatives. The only alternative I can propose that is better in terms of contrast ratio, it's the MSI MAG 274-QRF. Well, I don't understand MSI's uh, naming strategies to be honest. It's the MSI MAG 274QRF-QD. Now this is uh, an excellent monitor. 
You can also get this for around £358 uh, here in the UK. So um, just a bit more in terms of expense, but uh, it's an excellent monitor with better contrast ratio and better than or same as performance in terms of speed, response time, etc. If you want to go a little bit more budget friendly than the Gigabyte M27Q, you might be able to find that cheaper, but actually um, it seems to be fluctuating uh, in price. It's not a better panel than this. The contrast ratio, the speed, ghosting, etc. in terms of performance, it's below the LG IPS, the Nano IPS in, in, in my opinion. It's more about which one you can buy for less than 300 pounds. Currently, the M27Q, the Gigabyte M27Q is for around 329 pounds. So I would not recommend going for that at that price point. That concludes my review of this video. Just a short, very quick, good and bad and other alternatives video for you. As always, if you enjoyed the video, give us a like, give us a sub and uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.